All right, today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to talk about how to create an animated 3D circle with two different sides, like this one here. I was asked by Helena on uh, the Zara Users tutorial, or um, sorry, the Zara Users forums, to uh, um, make a tutorial to show how to do something like this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and quickly zip into uh, Zara Designer Pro. And uh, I'm using version 10, but the, this, this works for, uh, with earlier versions as well. And um, unfortunately, with um, you know, 3D graphics and with bitmaps, um, you cannot create uh, um, GIFs. Or, I'm, I'm sorry, you can create a GIF, you can't uh, create a, a flash. Uh, animation. So um, I'm going to show you how to, to put one together. It's really fairly sim simplistic. Um, just takes a little fiddling around. So uh, first thing I want to do uh, is create my uh, um, my animation. I wanna, so I'm going to create a new uh, um, a new animation document by going to File New and then Animation, or pressing Shift Control N to open up one. And what that's going to do is uh, automatically open up the animation frame gallery over here on the right hand side for me. Now you can adjust your uh, animation size to anything you want by just uh, uh, resizing the, uh, the right and the bottom sides of it. And that looks about right. Um, <clears throat> and the next thing I'm going to do is create my circle. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, get this quick shape circle, start in the upper right hand corner. I have it set to uh, to uh, bounds creation. I'm going to go ahead and stop in my upper left hand corner, hold the, down my control key, and that's going to constrain it to a perfect circle until I get one about the size that I want it. Right? And then once I place that more or less where I want it on the screen, I can go ahead and resize my animation to something a little bit closer to the edges of that. I want to leave a little bit of space. You don't have to leave as much as I did, um, but there you go. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to give it um, a, a line, um, and there is a reason for this. You can pick any color you want. Uh, I'm going to give this uh, a nice um, light bluish line color. Um, the reason for that, and I'll show you when I get there, is it's going to hide what we're doing when we swap out from one bitmap to the next. All right, now, uh, after I have my circle with a line, I'm going to uh, choose 3D by going to, um, to the 3D tool, or the extrude tool, and go ahead and grab it and, and slide it around. And you can see that now that this is a, a three-dimensional circle, yeah? Uh, you do have to go ahead and grab it and slide it around just so that you can get uh, um, it to become three-dimensional, right? It's not going to be three-dimensional if you just leave it alone um, and just click on the tool. You do have to actually play with it a little bit. Next thing I can do is I can adjust the uh, um, the, the extrude depth uh, to something uh, a little bit more manageable. You can leave it to, uh, how it was. You can make it larger, whatever. Um, but if you do that, it's going to cause some things to happen when, when you uh, uh, animate it. So just figure out how you want it. Uh, uh, you can go a little bit thicker, a little bit thinner, however you want. Uh, once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and make set all of my angles to zero. Angle one, two, and three. And that's just going to be our starting point. And three, also set to zero. Once I have those all set to zero, then I can go ahead and apply my bitmaps. And I just need to go ahead and pull those in. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to import um, a couple of bitmaps here. I wonder if I can do both at the same time. I sure can. I'm just going to... I held down control and clicked on the two that I wanted to. I'm going to import those. And it's going to tell me that it imported those at very large size. I know that. And the next thing I'm going to do is delete them. Okay. Now those didn't go anywhere. They're still here. And go back out to 100% and, and keep that at that size. And then if I look at my bitmap gallery, those are stored there now. So the first thing I'm going to do is, with this uh, selected, with my circle selected, I'm going to click on, uh, the, on one of these two uh, um, images and apply it as a fill. 
Okay. Now I have my friendly little koala bear there um, filled in this shape. And it has that blue outline, right? Uh, which is exactly how I want it. Okay, now that I've got that, and I've got all my angles set to zero, see, zero there, and I set this to angle two, and I'm gonna go ahead and press uh, this copy button over here on the right-hand side. And then uh, I'm going to, on the copy, on the second frame, I'm going to make give add 15 to the to the angle for angle two. And this is going to turn it this way, sideways. Okay, if I wanted to do it uh, up and down, uh, that way I would use either one or three. Um, and I'm going to continue to do that. I'm going to copy and add 15 to this, so make that 30, and continue that until I get it all the way down to 180. So I'm going to go ahead and just run through that really quick. you with the details of me saying I'm adding 15 each time, but that's exactly what I'm doing. Now once I hit 90, um, I can go ahead and change my bitmap, right, make sure I have that selected, uh, choose the other bitmap and press fill. All right, and you'll show, I'll show you why, because now it's flipping over to the other side of the coin. So I'm going to uh, copy this and then keep on going around. This goes to 105. Oops. Get that right? I guess I did. Okay. And once I get to 180, the next copy going to start at negative 180. And so I've gone from 180 and now it's, sorry, went from 180. This one I changed to negative 180 and I'm going to instantly uh, subtract the 15 from that. So I'm down to negative 165. Um, and I'll, again, I'll show you why you do this um, later, but if I didn't, it would um, do terrible things to uh, uh, the way the, the, um, the way this is, is oriented on the screen. So I'm going to keep on going, um, copy and, and uh, change my angle. until I get back down to uh, 90 degrees again, negative 90 degrees in this particular case. So at negative 90, with this selected, I'm going to change my bitmap again back to the koala bear. Keep on counting back down until I get down to zero. Although I'm not actually going to go to zero because I'm going to stop here at negative 15. Because if you'll remember, that zero. Yeah? Okay. Uh, the last thing I want to do is, uh, I know because I've already played around with this, uh, you can experiment a little bit, but if you go to uh, properties and go to animation and loop speed, 
this half a second for uh, each frame to display is, is much too long. So I'm going to change that down to a tenth of a second and press apply, close that, and now each frame, all 25, or all 25 frames, and I shouldn't have 25. One, two, three. Ah, I did it twice. That's one of the reasons. Well, let's see what that looks like. I may still have something, uh, one too many in there, but we'll check it out. No, nope. looks very, very smooth. And that, ladies and gents, is how you do it. Um, if you would like, then uh, the next, the last step would be to export it. And what you do is to file, export, and you need to find export animation. And like I say, you need to, not as a SWIF, but as an animative. I suppose you could do it as a SWIF. It would just be as individual um, uh, frames in the SWIF. Uh, but you can choose what, whatever you'd like and uh, export it how you wish. And um, you have your animation that you can then apply to your website. Uh, that's it. I hope you found that useful and interesting. And we'll come back and see us again next time.